St. Daniel and Companions, Martyrs, First Order. After the Franciscan Order had been blessed in the glorious death of its first martyrs, St. Berard and his four companions, holy rivalry was aroused among the children of St. Francis to offer their blood in preaching the faith of Christ. In 1227, Daniel, provincial of Calabria, a man of eminent sanctity, and six companions, Angelus, Samuel, Donalus, Leo, Hugolinus, and Nicholas, with the blessing of the minister general, went to Africa to preach the gospel of Christ. Landing at Choita, they resolved to preach in that large city. Before entering the city proper, they learned from Christian merchants that a strict order prohibited entrance to all Christians. They realized that their undertaking was fraught with the greatest danger, and they prepared themselves accordingly. On Saturday, October 2nd, they made their confession, received Holy Communion, and then spent the remainder of the day in prayer. In the evening, as our Lord did on the eve of his sufferings, they washed one another's feet. On Sunday morning, they entered the city and began to preach to the crowds in the streets and public places boldly declaring that salvation was to be found only in the name of Jesus. The city was in an uproar. The courageous preachers were thrown into prison. There they wrote to the Christian merchants in the suburbs, quote, Blessed be God, the Father of mercies, who comforts us in all our tribulations. Our Lord has commanded us, go and preach the gospel to all creatures. He has said, the servant is not greater than the master. If men persecute you, remember that they first persecuted me. Struck by these words, we poor and unworthy servants of Jesus Christ have abandoned our home and have come to preach in this country for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. And although we may have much to suffer, we are greatly comforted in the Lord hoping he will be pleased to accept the sacrifice of our lives. To him only be honor and glory forevermore." End quote. A week later, the prisoners were led before the governor, and an attempt was made to induce them to renounce their faith, first by promises, then by threats. All remained firm in their profession of Christ and were condemned to be beheaded. The six companions now knelt before Daniel, their superior, thanked him for providing them with the opportunity of winning a martyr's crown, and asked for a final blessing. Father Daniel, amid tears of holy joy, embraced each one, blessed them, and said, Let us rejoice in the Lord, my faithful companions, for this is a festival day for us. The holy angels are already coming to conduct our souls to the eternal mansions, and this day the white-robed martyrs will receive us into their holy company. Heaven is open above our heads. We shall soon be in possession of eternal happiness. And so their heads rolled from the block, but their souls took their flight to heaven. Their remains were later taken to Spain, where many miracles occurred at their intercession. Pope Leo X canonized them in 1516. On Venerating the Holy Martyrs. In our veneration of the saints, the holy martyrs deserve special attention. We venerate in them, to an extent, the blood of Christ, since the blood they shed is like a continuation of the blood which Christ shed for us on Mount Calvary. They sealed with their blood the truths for which Christ was crucified. By sacrificing their lives, they also gave proof of their perfect fidelity and supreme charity towards Christ, thus giving all Christians an, enc an encouraging example. The willing self-oblation of the holy martyrs should impel us to venerate these heroes of the faith 
and should fill us with a great love for our holy religion. Consider the special way in which Holy Church draws our attention to the veneration of the holy martyrs. On their feast days, the priest approaches the altar clothed in red vestments. The color reminds us of the blood the martyrs shed. In offering their blood and their lives for the holy faith, they made the greatest sacrifice man can make. We should praise and bless them for it in the name of Holy Church, whose glorious heroes they are. The red of the vestments also signifies the fire of love which God kindled in the hearts of the martyrs. That is also the purpose of the red color on the Feast of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles in the form of fiery tongues and strengthened them remarkably. It is this fire of love that gives martyrdom its value. If I should deliver my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13.3 Hence, on the feasts of the holy martyrs, we should praise and thank God, who gave this fire of love to so many thousands of his saints, who became witnesses of their faith by shedding their blood. Consider that the martyrs gave proof of their fidelity even before they shed their blood. Faithful to the call of the apostolate, they went out to face danger after due preparation. They accepted reproach and pain patiently, even cheerfully, for the sake of Christ. Promises could not lure them, nor threats frighten them to abandon him. We must imitate the martyrs and their fidelity, even if we are not called upon to shed our blood for Christ. Only in that way may we hope to please them by our veneration. The glorious crown which they have won should encourage us to remain faithful in our allegiance to Christ. Their powerful intercession will help us. Prayer of the Church. As we rejoice, O Lord, at the crown which our brethren, thy martyrs, have won, may it produce in us an increase of virtue, and at their intercession, may it also be our comfort. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Daniel and Companion Martyrs, pray Amen. for us. Thank you.